Hey y'all, Tani Cooks here, and I am gonna show you how to cook mustard fried chicken and pork chops in this video. I've had a short that I created maybe last year of mustard fried chicken that people have recently started watching and asking me questions. So I thought, why not make it again in a regular length video so that I can answer some of those questions. And so that's what I'm going to do today. Stay tuned so we can get to cooking. So I have my meat already in bowls that I just put them in after I brought them home from the grocery store, but they're not washed or anything like that. So we're gonna do that first. And then I'm gonna show you how I season this up. We're gonna start out with our yellow mustard and basic seasonings like salt, pepper, smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, but you can use the seasonings of your choice. You may wanna add in some others. First thing I'm gonna do is wash my meat. So I'm gonna wash my pork in a bowl of cool water and you can add in some white vinegar. The main thing to do when washing your pork chops is just mainly to make sure you wipe off any gritty part that you fill with your fingers. If you have excess pieces of fat, you may wanna trim them. In a separate bowl, I'm now going to wash my chicken wings. I'm also washing them in cool water with some white vinegar. And the time that we spend washing our chicken, we're also inspecting it to pull off any fatty pieces, any feathers that may still be there, or any discolored pieces that we want to remove. So after washing both bowls of meat, I'm going to dry them in the bowl by putting paper towels at the bottom and drying them off at the top. We want our meat to be dry before we season it so that we don't dilute our seasonings with any of the water. So I have my chicken and I have my pork. I'm gonna start seasoning my chicken first with the basic seasons that I showed you, salt, pepper. I use a little bit of salt here because I like the salt at the end. I also like onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika. You might like complete seasoning. You might wanna add a little bit of lemon pepper. I am adding now my French's yellow mustard and you'll notice I'm not measuring it. I'm just adding enough mustard to cover all of my chicken wings. Now, I said all, but I only added half of my chicken wings to the bowl first because I wanna make sure they're seasoned well with the dry seasonings and the mustard first and we're gonna massage that in to make sure it is fully incorporated. Then I added the second half of my chicken wings to the bowl and I added the same dry seasonings and now I'm adding the mustard again to the top. So that way the top and bottom of my bowl are well seasoned. Someone asked in my previous shorts video why I use mustard. Mustard adds a nice tangy flavor and it also contains vinegar, which is a tenderizer. Now I do like to add liquid smoke because that's a flavor I like, and I felt like it needed more smoked paprika, so I add my seasonings based on the way it smells and the way it looks at this point. Mustard is a great tenderizer, but you won't taste it at the end and say, hmm, this meat has mustard on it. It'd just be a nice little twang you taste, and that's why I like to use it. It also adds a nice golden color my meat is going to be a little bit brown though because you'll notice I add smoked paprika which gives it a deep red hue and the liquid smoke is also dark brown. So just keep that in mind if you don't get the color that you're expecting. But seasonings are totally subjective so you can use the seasonings of your choice but mustard is a great option for not only chicken and pork chops but also fish. I have a video for mustard fried catfish that is absolutely delicious. Oh, and because mustard is a tenderizer, it helps keep your meat juicy and tender when you cook it. And also this massage process, we are massaging kind of firmly to get the seasonings in but also to tenderize our meat. So with a gloved hand, don't be afraid to go in there and really rub the meat. <laughs> okay. Our meat is covered with mustard and that's what we want. You'll notice my pieces are very thin. So someone asked me how long do you cook the pork chop or the chicken? And it really depends on the size of the meat that you're cooking. So we'll talk about that a little bit later once we get our grease going. For now we have our meat. I'm gonna put a piece of plastic wrap and let that sit to the side for several minutes while we prepare our batter. So I'm using two parts all purpose flour, one part yellow cornmeal. So if you use one cup flour, use half a cup of cornmeal. I use two cups of flour, so I use one cup of cornmeal. The dry seasonings I'm using are the same ones I put on my pork chops and the chicken. I use minimal salt, and you may at the end decide you wanna add more, but look at how beautiful this seasoning blend looks in our flour. So I have a new glove on that doesn't have mustard on it, and I'm just stirring in my seasonings into my flour. And if I decide I need more seasonings, I will add it. The first thing I'm gonna do is drop my chicken pieces in, just a few of them at the time, 
a few of them at a time to make sure each piece gets covered well. In order to help our bread and stay on our meat, we're going to let this sit here for a good 10, 15 minutes when we prep our oil. So you definitely want to do this a little bit ahead of time. In fact, you can actually season and marinate your meat and mustard the night before. And then just before you're going to cook it at the flour, at the seasoned flour to it, that would be delicious as well. But it's, marinating is not required. So now all of my chicken looks to be sufficiently covered. As it sits, some of the flour pieces will settle off. So you may need to remix it in the flour a little bit, recoat it before you actually drop it into the hot grease. So now in another bowl, I'm using the same seasoned flour, but now I'm doing my pork chops. So my chicken is off to the side waiting. Look at how thin that chop is. I didn't realize these were that thin when I bought them. So if yours are thicker than mine, then you're going to cook it a little bit longer. One thing I don't do, I do not fry the very thick pork chops. I use those for a different preparation. I have a delicious recipe for a stuffed pork chop that I do on the stove and in the oven. But I deep fry regular cut pork chops or the thin ones. So the pork chops are going to sit to the side as I prep my oil. Now, y'all, this 48 ounce bottle of oil is like $5 now. So I had to use two and a half of them for my deep fryer. It's pretty big, but I'm able to set my deep fryer to 325 to 350 degrees to cook. And now I'm pouring in my oil. And this is just half a bottle. So I end up having to use two and a half bottles. That's what, $13 just in oil? So I'm not going to be frying too much more for health reasons, but also the cost of the oil is going bananas. So my oil is in the deep fryer and it is heating up. And so now my basket is in and I'm just adding several pieces, about six or seven pieces of chicken wings and listen to that fry y'all. I was worried maybe I didn't add enough oil because you see a couple of pieces are still not fully submerged in the oil, but I also didn't want my hot oil to boil over the sides of the pan. So I'm just going to use some tongs and turn the pieces over, just get them in there snug. I probably could have left one piece out, but it's not the end of the world. It will come out delicious. I promise you. While my chicken is cooking, I have a baking rack prepped with a paper towel on top of it and then my rack is on top of it. This is a great little tool to let your meat drain without touching the paper towels and getting soggy. Look at our beautiful golden chicken, y'all. Amazing. Now, if it's not dark enough for you, you can let it cook a little bit longer. The way you know your chicken is cooked is when you notice it start to float to the top a little bit. I cook these chicken wings for about eight to nine minutes because that's how I like my chicken and pork to be well cooked. I do not eat any undercooked um, chicken or pork, even though I do beef, medium rare, and I do sushi as well. So I'm just going to let these chicken pieces sit on the side and now I'm going to do my pork chops. And so look at that, y'all. These pork chops are pretty thin, so I'm going to watch for them to float to the top, as you can see they're doing now. This took about six or seven minutes, but you can turn it over and make sure both sides have the coloring that you want. It really shouldn't need to cook more than seven minutes if they're very thin. It might take nine or ten if you have regular cut pork chops. This oil is very hot, so when you're doing this, make sure you stay with your deep fryer, the hot oil, and that you don't have any small children. Look at that, y'all, or pets running around because you don't want anyone to get burnt accidentally by messing around in the kitchen and tripping and falling and something falling on them. That would be a disaster. So pull your meat out. And as you notice, I cook it in batches and then I put foil on it to let it rest on the rack. So it helps keep in some of the warmth and the heat. This is absolutely delicious, y'all. Look at how golden and rich this looks. It's so crispy and so flavored. Now, this is a time to hit it with a little sprinkle of salt. Hickory smoked sea salt would be absolutely delicious on this, but don't over salt it because it's just not necessary. We have that delicious mustard flavor and those other seasonings, y'all. If y'all love fried food, maybe once or twice a year, then go ahead and make this recipe. It will be perfect and you will not regret it. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel.